All right, great to see everybody here tonight. Uh, it's kind of hot out there, so for anybody to get out and about is doing something. Uh, please be seated if you're standing. I'd like to thank all of you out there on the internet also that have, uh, have tuned in tonight or this evening for the Peaceful Solution Character Education Program Teacher Certification Course. This is the course that you need to become a teacher of the Peaceful Solution. We, we strive to impart the knowledge that we have and the experiences that we've been through in teaching the Peaceful Solution to all the students, whether here at headquarters or online. For those of you that are online, uh, if you don't have a book, you can go to the menu and drop down and choose which book you'd like to download or preview at the time and go through and follow along. So tonight we are in the respect unit right there, the Peaceful Solution Character Education Respect Unit. And you'll notice at the bottom of the page it says to change the hearts and minds. That's what the Peaceful Solution does. It changes the hearts and minds. Now, we talked a little bit about it in the last class, but it's more than just changing your mind. You know, any of us can change our, our mind today and think, man, I don't want to go through this anymore. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm going to start doing things differently. So you changed your mind, but yet your heart hasn't changed yet. And so what occurs? You go out there and the first time something comes your way, you fall right back into the old way of doing things because your heart hasn't changed yet. Got to change that heart, your desires. Your desire has to change. So right now, if you desire going out and partying and smoking dope and uh, doing uh, psychotic type drugs and everything, uh, you know, that's going to have to change. Your heart has to change. The desire has to go away. Anyways, um, uh, we are uh, getting close to the end of the, uh, of the respect unit. In fact, tonight we'll be mainly starting out on page 132, but we're going to back up just a minute and we're going to look at uh, uh, the couple pages before that, part of the class that we did last, well, the last class. And I wanted to, uh, wanted to go over just a couple things because it's so important. On page 130 in your respect unit, this is entitled, Let's Take a Closer Look at Friends. Now, we went over this the last class, but it, it doesn't focus too much on the, the negative peer pressure or, or how important peer pressure is. So I just wanted to go over that again before we really get started here, just, kinda, just kind of a refresher, if you will. And so, uh, if you could, turn over, if, I know most of you don't have your character book with you, but if you did, or if you're online and want to download the character book or go to that page real quick, you can go to the character unit, page 70. Page 70. And this is entitled Peer Power. And this is in the character unit. It starts out and says, as you get older, you rely on your friends more for companionship and acceptance. It's nice to be around others who are fun and share similar interests and personality traits as you, which is true. That's the reason that we have personality. You know, it'd be a dull world if, if, if everyone's personality was exactly the same. You know, if you were a joyful person and um, outgoing and everybody else in the world was joyful and outgoing, you might think it would be great, but you might find that that everyone being really a, a, a lot alike in that manner wouldn't be so great. You, you gotta have the differences to make it interesting. But it's nice to be around others who are fun and share similar interests and personality traits. That, that's true, but we're all different in, in many different ways. All of our personalities vary a little bit and so forth. What, what we wanna do though is get the character the same. Having friends is great, but friends can also influence each other in negative ways. And, and this is the part right here that we have to be aware of, is the influence coming from friends. Sometimes you might not even realize it because it's not a spoken word. You know, someone's not saying, hey, I'm, I'm here to make you choose the wrong way. No, it doesn't come out like that. 
And it, it might be so subtle that you don't even recognize it, but yet it went into your ears, it went into your mind, and it's something that you'll eventually have to deal with. So this is what we have to be aware of, is that influences are subtle. And you might hear things, you might be in the wrong place at the wrong time around some people and you hear things going on over here that you shouldn't be hearing. Or you see something that you would have been better off not seeing. Uh, or maybe get involved in something that you would rather not have been involved with. Maybe someone committed a crime like right there next to you, now all of a sudden you're implicated in it in some manner. So we have to be careful of the influence that friends bring to us. So here's the problem, you know, if your friends accentuate the negative and not the positive traits in their character and encourage you to do the same, they are influencing you in a negative way. This is called negative peer pressure. Negative peer pressure can come in different forms. For instance, your friend has cigarettes and offers you one, you say, hey, no thanks, and, and he says, oh, come on, everybody smokes. So now he's, now he's pushing it on you, you know? Even if he did not directly tell you to smoke, his response can pressure you into thinking that you will be an oddball if you don't do it. You know, you don't fit in. You're not going to be part of the crowd. Somebody's not going to like you. Look, everybody else is doing it. Why won't you? You know, this, this is actually bullying too. So here's another example. Your friend tells you she's going to shoplift a necklace from a mall. If you're really her friend, you, you will come with her to be her lookout. Well, no, if you're really, really her friend, you won't go with her at all to do anything like that, and you'd try to talk her out of it. You know, you could put some positive peer pressure towards this. You could turn it around. But you might also take a look at that friendship and wonder if this is really someone you need to be relying on as a friend. And <clears throat> when, you're, when you're dealing with friends, when you're, when you're dealing with the influences, you know, everyone has a, a reputation. You have a reputation, your friends have reputations, and so a lot of times we know that someone might have the reputation of not being quite so honest, you know. Um, and, and we might not have seen it in action firsthand or something, but we've heard a little bit about it. And we didn't want to jump to conclusions or just go on hearsay. But, you know, reputations are important, the reputation of a person. And for you to protect your reputation, that's something that you want to work at. And so here again you know, back on 130 in the respect units, talking about let's take a closer look at friends and, and learning not to be disrespectful and being respectful and, and, uh, and uh, being encouraging to our friends and watching out for the negative influences and everything. So, if we're with people that have a negative reputation, that have a bad reputation, then what, where does that put us? that puts us in the same group and then others that know the reputation of those that you're with see you and they've got to figure well okay uh, old Joe is just like uh, those guys okay I see how he is now you know reputation is important in fact if we turn over to page 90 in the character unit and in the character unit, if you have it page 90 most of you will not have it but that's okay I'll uh, I'll read it to you okay this is entitled, Your Reputation Precedes You. And um, the reason we're going into this is, again, because of friends. They have a reputation, you have a reputation. Uh, a lot relies on that reputation. So there are many advantages to maintaining a positive character, one of which is your reputation. Your reputation is developed over time. It's the overall quality or character is seen or judged by people in general. So we see that people are judging some things here. What they're doing is they're making decisions. They're judging whether they're going to be around you or whether they're going to be a part of what you're doing. They're judging whether they want to go with you to this place or this place. or You know, there's a lot of these things taking place, a lot of decisions being made. And so the overall quality or character 
that people see in you in general is what we're talking about here. But it can also mean gaining recognition from other people for some characteristic or ability that you have. Like, you know, being a great mechanic. You can get a reputation for being a great mechanic. You can get a reputation for, for being a great barber. You can get a reputation for being a, a great uh, uh, construction uh, person, you know, superintendent or, or uh, worker. You could get a reputation for being a great student, right? You can get a reputation for being a great student, like some of the young men here uh, in, at headquarters here that are, that are learning. <clears throat> so this recognition can be part of that reputation too. Anyway, uh, whether it's positive or negative, you know, you've got to consistently demonstrate and maintain positive moral character traits in order to develop that great reputation. Once a bad reputation is established, it's difficult to undo what others think of you. Be, be aware of something and on guard of something, though. If you have or hold a certain idea of someone's reputation based not upon personal knowledge, but based upon what someone else has told you, to be fair, you might make sure, you, you might try to find out a little bit more about the person that's in question. If you're hearing that someone has a bad reputation, but you've never seen anything like that from the person, and all you know is great stuff, you might do a little bit more research before you just shut them down. You might actually do some research into the person that's, you know, uh, given this information and, and, and pushing forth the bad reputation. You might look at that source right there. Because there are a lot of people who have learned how to psychologically manipulate people and create a bad reputation for somebody through rumors and, and innuendo and so forth when that person might not be a bad person at all and you might be falling into it. Even sometimes I've seen, I used to work for a guy actually that did quite well at those things. Um, he was very great at manipulating. Uh, he was very great in psychology and he used those things to his advantage to make money. You know, that's what it was all about for him, is making money. And he used it to his advantage. He would, he would uh, start a rumor about somebody just to see what you were going to do. He would start a rumor about somebody to see what they were going to do. And he really didn't care what effect it had on lives. The negative effect, the, the pain and the agony, and the psychological dismemberment that's taken place in doing that thing. And it's, it's not right to do manipulating people like that. But, because once a bad re reputation is established, it is difficult to undo what others think, because that's the first thing they hear in their mind is what this one person said, and maybe it's a person they trusted. And, but you can bet, if you're hearing things from that person about somebody's reputation, and rumors about that person, you can, you can bet he, he's probably doing it about you too, you know? And that's the thing to think about. Don't think you're something special that, oh, look, he's sharing all this with me. I'm so wonderful and special. I'm so flattered to be this person. Don't go that route because it's not helpful for you. Sooner or later you will find out that he's doing the same thing to you and it will hit home and you'll realize, hey, I wonder if this other guy he was talking about isn't such a bad person after all. And then you might go and find out that, hey, that, the person really got, got a bad rap on that deal. So this all goes into taking a closer look at friends. But it's far better to maintain a decent reputation. And it's, it's hard to do. You know, you want to work at it. And when you, when you think someone is saying something about you, it would be great to look into it and find out what's going on and get some trusted individual to help you with that. You know, don't go off half cock. When negative character traits are demonstrated over a period of time, and this is why this is over a period of time a reputation is developed. It's just like your character. 
It takes time. Remember, you don't just make up your mind one day that you're not going to talk bad about people anymore or you're not going to complain all the time anymore or you're going to stop stealing or you're going to stop smoking dope or whatever it might be. You, you might make up your mind that day, but you're probably not going to ever not do it again. You're, you're probably going to kind of fall down a little bit and something get in your way and then later on you come back and make up your mind again and probably mess up again and then you come back and make up your mind again and over a period of time you finally get to that point to where you make up your mind one time and guess what? It sticks. But see, it wasn't that one time. It was over several times where you built up some immunity to it, where you built up your character, your ability to practice self-control, your ability to want to have a positive reputation and put the negative away, your ability to respect yourself, you know, and your value system changing too. So all these things take time, and it takes time for this reputation. And it's such a hurtful thing when someone's reputation is knocked down because, I mean, just think about it. If you've ever said anything that was not right about somebody, and even if it was, you know, gossip and rumors, some of those things can be true. But is it up to you to gossip about it? Is it up to you to tear down a person? No, it's not up to us to do such a thing. It's up to us to beware if someone's a thief. You want to beware and, and, you know, make sure you're watching, you know. But you don't, you don't have to, like, ruin his life and grind his face in the dirt. He might be trying to overcome that thing. He might be trying not to be a thief. And you should be trying to help that person not be a thief. You should be trying to encourage that person to not be a thief or whatever else it is that the person is doing. Even the person that may talk bad about people and start rumors and everything. It's up to us to encourage that person not to do such a wicked thing. I mean, what a horrible thing. That's like murdering somebody. Some people's reputations have been ruined and they've gone home and committed suicide. Some people's jobs and livelihoods have been taken away because of this very thing. And they go home and they just can't even feed their family anymore because they lost their job because of some person lying about them. I'm sorry, but th this is one of the m most critical things to me right here. This is what it all amounts to. Everything that we as teachers and students of the people, Peaceful Solution are learning today comes down to this right here, what I'm talking about right now. It's... Caring for your neighbor as you care for yourself. That's what it all comes down to. You don't like it when somebody talks about you. You don't like it if somebody says something about you, whether it's negative or true, or whether it's, uh, um, whether it's true or not, you know, whether it's false or, or not. You don't want that being said. You don't want it spread. You know, I mean, I can think back and I, I can think, oh man, last time someone said something about me that was totally out there, I was really upset about it. But, you know, I took it in and thought about it a little bit and kind of wondered where the guy was coming from and maybe what he's been through. Maybe he's got some psychological problems of his own or something that he's dealing with. And so we got to think about that too. Where's that person coming from? What he's, what's he been through and so forth? And we have to look at all those things and then decide, what are we going to do? Go confront him and beat him down and slap him in the face or something? Or are we going to try to encourage the person to do better? That's caring for others as you care for yourself. If you don't like it, when they do it to you, then you need to know that they don't like it when you do it to them. See? That's what it all comes down to, man. That's what this peaceful solution to change the hearts and minds is. Well, we want to be careful of the reputation that we're building, so we need to be careful about those we're hanging around with, too, if we know something is, is wrong. Um... So when negative character traits are demonstrated over a period of time, they actually become part of your character and part of your reputation. It's what you're practicing. 
remember we've talked about this before too. You know, it's what you're practicing. And you as a teacher are the peaceful solution. What you practice is what people are seeing also. If you're practicing something negative, then people are seeing it and your reputation as a teacher of the peaceful solution is not going to be that great. So watch what you're doing. I mean, I look at the things that, that I do sometimes. And there's some things I do that I would, that I would like to like shut off right now that, and it never occur again. I haven't quite got there yet, though. Um, so, some say that um, uh, it's like every, every time I'm driving, I'm test driving the car or something, you know. Uh, sometimes it goes a little faster than it should. And, that, and sometimes you could even get reminded in a more severe fashion by getting a, like a ticket and having to pay a fine or something too. That's no fun, right? I, I'm sure none of you ever had a ticket in here before. <laughs> so think about those things. And, and so uh, that's part of the reputation that, that I'm just telling you that, that I would like to get rid of and, and change. But it, it does take self-control. It does take discipline. It does take that value system and in, in coming to an understanding that going too fast can be a dangerous situation you know so all these things have to come in play just an example there but do you know anyone with a bad reputation that's a question for you you know I mean you don't have to answer me but I want you to sit and think about it right now I'll look online too do you know anyone with a bad reputation I see some heads shaking in here. Um, I know someone with a bad reputation. I know someone with a bad reputation that doesn't deserve that reputation that, that he has. I know that it's totally unfounded. I know somebody that tells something about people causing bad reputations. I know somebody that has died, I would say, because of their bad reputation. Think about it. Man, if you think about life, and, and most of the guys I'm looking at here, we have some young men up front, but I'm looking at, you know, middle-aged, uh, uh, most of you aren't as old as I am, but some of you are. But I, I'm looking at, at guys out here and, and uh, in, in the online audience, I'm sure, too, that have been through life for a while, you know, 30, 40, maybe 50 years, something like that. And when you get older like that, you can look back on these things and, and see what reputations have caused in your life or someone else's. Uh, what's another example of reputation in, um, in daily life? Reputation in daily life. You know, nowadays, if you go to get insurance on a car, one of the first things they do is run your credit. If you have a bad credit score, guess what? Your insurance costs more. That's your reputation, that credit. Um, if you go to get a credit card or an automobile loan and they run your credit and you have a ba bad credit score, guess what? You're going to pay more interest on that credit card and more interest on that loan on the automobile. It's, it's a given. There's no, there's no fighting about it or anything. Yet, on the other hand, if you have excellent credit, they're like throwing money at you. You know, they want you to take it and use it. They want you to get their insurance, so they give you discounts. They want you to get their, your credit card, so they give you, you know, 24 months with uh, zero interest just to get you to sign up for their card, whatever. And, and so that credit report is your reputation as far as credit worthiness is. And that's why some people get so messed up, which, you know, rightfully so, um, when they see something on a credit report that is invalid, that's not correct that is a mistake or you know in some cases maybe something done on purpose so so that's a reputation thing that affects everybody just to let you know anyway uh, the reputation that bad reputation was developed by some actions others saw or heard about that person at one time or another whether it was true or not in other words, someone who steals will gain the reputation of being a thief and will not be trusted. People will be afraid to leave their belongings around that person. On the other hand, a person who has earned a reputation of being trustworthy and responsible will be known as a dependable person. 
He will be trusted, respected, and admired for his positive character traits. And as you know, word gets around whether it's positive or negative. And your reputation is no different. In fact, you might know all about someone, though it might be true or not, without ever meeting them because their reputation precedes them just as yours precedes you. People are observing you at all times, whether you realize it or not. And how so in today's world? Cameras everywhere, right? I mean, everywhere. Uh, part, of, uh, part of a police investigation in something where they didn't actually catch the suspect, part of that investigation would be to go around to local businesses and review their camera footage, if you know it's recorded, review their camera footage to see if it caught anything. Like any cameras that are facing anywhere near the ATM machine that was robbed or the, uh, or the storefront that was robbed. So many, so many cameras in the vicinity. I, I mean, it's unreal. But the more that others observe you, the more they put together a picture of what you're all about. And over a period of time, usually if it's forming into something bad or something great, it, it's probably right over a period of time, but there's those little glitches along the way that, you know, it could be wrong, it could be right, uh, and you find out if, if someone deserves what their, uh, that reputation that they're getting or not. I'm going to go ahead and put the character book down for now, and we're going to get back over here into the respect unit. So we covered that pretty well, and we discussed the negative peer pressure and so forth, and uh, and how important friends are and how important it is for us to watch who we're with and then putting it all together about being disrespectful or respectful we need to again stop and think about our primary emotions and what's going on with us are we embarrassed um, are we hurt in some manner are we frustrated these primary things before it goes any further being prepared putting it all together learning how to appreciate people uh, again, uh, working on our value system to make sure that we do value the right things and we don't value, or it's way down on the list, the, the wrong things. But um, understanding the main point on page 132, let's talk about this for just a minute. So using the following situations offer a peaceful solution to the problem. So you need to be thinking about this when I read it. Think about it in your mind as if it's, you know, not, not just words in a book. <clears throat> And you can replace it, like if it says, you know, your friends asked you to cut class. Okay, well, your friend asked you to take off work today. Your wife asked you to take off work so y'all could go somewhere or whatever. You know, replace the scenario to something that would be more, you know, in tune with your life, okay? So the first one is, you've asked your brother several times. Well, you know, I wouldn't be asking my brother, you know, but maybe might be one of you would I don't know but you've asked your brother several times not to go into your room and use your belongings okay well uh, already I see that that could be taking place that could be anybody I could replace that brother with um, you've asked your friend several times uh, uh, not to go into your locker at work whatever you know so not to go into your room and use your belongings when you're not at home but he continues to do it you know, what do you do? What do you do in that situation? Think about it. Has it occurred to you? Has it occurred to you lately? You know, these... Um, these question and answer uh, sections are to get us to think, to, to get us to use our mind and to, to think about these things, not, not just to read through it and, oh, this is, some, uh, oh, this is some school book, some high school book or something here, talking about my brother going into my room. Ah. Or the next one, your friends have asked you to cut class to go to the movies. <laughs> cut class. Uh. Shoot, let me see number three. Let me see if it applies to me. Well, my friend while visiting overheard a conversation. I went, uh, you know, this stuff doesn't apply to me. None of it. <laughs> well, yes, it does. All of it does. That's why I said, think about it. Replace it with what's going on in your life in whatever situation that might apply to you and, 
and th- really think about what you would do. So I'm sitting here thinking about that situation right there. And what would I do if my coworker was going into my locker <clears throat> at work and I asked him not to do it, but yet he continued to do it? He continued to, uh, uh, there's no locks on these things and it's just stuff we put in there that, that we have until we're, we're out of work. But I'm not in there and he goes in it to see what I've got, you know. And I've asked him not to do it. What do I do now? Well, what would be one of the things I could do? You know, I could go to, of course, the supervisor at work and mention it to him for one thing, right? Hey, you know, he's going into my locker. I, I've, I've found him with some of my stuff and I've asked him not to do this. And I don't want a problem here, but this is what's going on. So you can go to an authority figure, right? Um, if they will allow you to put a lock on it, you could put a lock on the locker. But let's look at the thing about the brother going into your room. Okay, well now it's a little little serious there too that he's going into your room. Or your next door neighbor going into your house. Um, you know, maybe uh, you live pretty close to one another. Maybe you're in a trailer park and there's campers right next to each other and the guy in the camper next to you comes out and goes into yours when you're not there or looks into your shed and wants to use some of your belongings. You know, so so I'm just saying, think about these things. Okay, well your friends have asked you to cut class, so you've been asked to cut class, cut work, cut something important to go to the movies or some other uh, extravaganza and you've told the person that's trying to get you to do it that you're not interested but they continue to bully you to pressure you to put the pressure on well in this case of course they're pr- trying to pre- they're pressuring you to do something negative you know cutting uh, uh, putting aside your responsibilities to go do something you know fun um, so so they are n- using negative peer pressure but anyway, what are some of the answers you could give? Um, in this case, cut in class, you could tell them your education is very important. Uh, if you want, they wanted you to cut work and go do something, you could say, look, man, I need my job. I've got to feed my family. Or I'm saving up for a new car or a used car or what have you. You know, uh, all these things. You think about what you would do. This is part of being prepared in advance also, setting your mind in advance and being prepared for what might come your way. This is all part of that. So your friend, while visiting, overheard a conversation you had with your parents. Your friend, while visiting, overheard a conversation you had on the phone with a coworker. Overheard a conversation you had on the phone with your boss. Overheard a conversation you had with, you know, fill in the blanks, okay? So the next day you find, found out that he had repeated what he heard to your mutual friends, much to your dismay and not liking what you were, that, that they had heard such a thing and that he had done such a thing. But what would you do? Well, you know, again, depending upon the attitude of the friend and what mood they were in at the time, you might be able to confront them at that time and talk to them about it. On the other hand, it might be something that you might need to wait and get some trusted help or or some counseling with to know how to address the situation and possibly even get some uh, third party involved. So your brother bosses you around, expects you to do his chores, all right? Again, replace it. Your co-worker bosses you around, wants you to do his chores, not just yours at work during cleanup. You know, what would you do? Your sister plays loud music while you're trying to study. What would you do? Your brother plays loud music. Your neighbor plays loud, loud music. Your, uh, your co-worker. Um, you know, you name it. I've actually dealt with this situation recently where somebody was playing loud music and I, I really, I mean, it was very loud and they were like, you know, thousand feet away something like that and the music was very loud and I could hear every word of it and I really didn't want to hear the music and I, I did I called him and I asked him hey man would you mind turning that down I said I'm I really don't want to hear your music and I'm listening to something myself and I'm having trouble hearing it well he turned it down I mean you know I asked him kindly I didn't 
make any threats or anything. You know, he turned it down, everything was fine. But it doesn't always go that way, right? And, and you know, it depends on our frame of mind when we pick up the phone and we call or when we talk to our sister that's playing loud music or whoever it is. It depends on our attitude when we talk to him. Are we saying, hey man, why don't you shut that music off, dude? Well, what kind of response do you think that's going to get from the person? <laughs> Probably not very great. Because you just, you know, started the deal, right? You, you're, you're like, um, you're talking to him in a disrespectful tone, and you're starting something right there. And depending upon how his attitude is and how respectful he is, which might not be you know, too respectful thinking since he's already got his music way too loud in the first place, you know. Uh, so what do you think he's going to come back with? And now all of a sudden it's an argument. And arguments go nowhere. If, there's, if, if we're not trying to find a solution to the problem, it's a waste of words and all it is is to see who can be the biggest guy on the block. I mean, really, that's all it is, is a pride thing. Well, he said this to me. He said that to me. It's like children. I see it all the time. Well, he hit me. He bumped into me. <laughs> you know? Okay, but you have to learn that whether he hit you on purpose or bumped into you or whatever, it doesn't give you the right to hit the person back. It just means there's a problem and now we need to solve it. And that's tough with children. Shouldn't be so tough with adults. We ought to be able to deal with it, right? Especially all you old guys out there. I mean, I'm looking at this crowd here. I mean, there's a bunch of you that are my age, okay? <laughs> so we should, we should have learned by now how to deal with some of these things and should have learned that what's really important in life. Because when you go at home at the end of the day and you look back at the argument that you had, How important was it in your life up to this point? You know, everything in your life taken into consideration for the last 30, 40, 50 years, how important was that thing you were arguing about today? How important was it for the day? I mean, really, think about it. It, it probably had no importance whatsoever. So we need to put everything into perspective. That's part of what this treating people with respect is. Is, you know, understanding that, that you're creating friendships and relationships that, that are going to last for years or even the rest of your life. So why does some little something matter so much? Even if they were playing the loud music and you asked them kindly to stop playing the loud music and they wanted to argue about it, and what does it matter in the, in the whole breakdown of life that they're playing their music a little loud? They're going to turn it off sooner or later. What does it matter? You're going to get your blood pressure all up and get all freaked out and everything, maybe get in a fight and argue, argue, argue and make a fool out of yourself and people seeing you and everything. I mean, really, come on, man. These are the things that we have to think about, too, as a, as a teacher of the Peaceful Solution. And, and I know there's a couple of you out there probably saying, Oh, yeah, well, I saw you one day, buddy. <laughs> you're, you're probably right. You did. And, and don't hesitate to come up and tell me if you do, okay? You, you can come right up to me and tell me. I'm not, uh, and, and if I don't shut up right away and, and stop yapping, well, you know, uh, then, then something's very wrong. But... Uh, but feel free if you see me acting crazy to come on up and tell me. All right, so last one on the list there. Your aunt tells you no when you ask to go swimming. Your friends tease you, encourage you to come anyway. All right, well. Um, so what could some of the answers be? Um, well, if your, your aunt, uh, she's probably your authority at the time. It sounds like this person is being watched by the aunt and she said, no, you can't go swimming. Um, but uh, your friends want you to go anyway. Again, that's negative peer pressure. They're really really putting it on you, you know, trying to get you to do something fun and uh, put your, sh shirk your responsibilities and so forth. So anyway, <clears throat> I guess my thought on this whole thing that I'm trying to get across to you is... Um, 
when dealing with friends, when, when dealing with peer pressure, and when dealing with people's reputations, reputations are such a fragile thing, it's, it is very, very, very important, you know, and, and that's part of having friends and part of being respectful to your friends and them being respectful to you. It's a fragile thing. You know, care for it as such. And then remember, remember, <clears throat> when it comes to dealing with these situations and looking for a peaceful solution, the peaceful solution to these things, remember everything you've learned. Remember and think, really do stop and think, what is this going to matter in my life? Is this really a big deal? You know, if the person doesn't answer the way I want them to, is it really a big deal in my life? You know, think about that because, you know, 99 times out of 100, you're going to say, no, it's not a big deal, and you're going to kind of laugh it off and go the other way, you know? If they're doing something wrong, you need to point it out to them if, if you know, they're, they're able to hear it at the time. But if they're not able to, get a third party involved, and, you know, that that's, might be the way to do it. So, um, and not necessarily a third party that you think is going to take your side, so to speak, you know? Um, it needs to be a third party that's looking for the peaceful solution and has no agenda either way. So anyway, let's go, let's turn over to Lesson Plan 5, page E. Lesson Plan 5, page E. So we finished procedure number 7. And uh, I, I think these, uh, in, in understanding the main point, we have dramatized. If you look at that, it says for variation, these scenarios can be dramatized. I think we have dramatized them a little bit in, in, in speech, in, in actually in verbalizing them and, and kind of changing them around a little bit and having, having a little variety there. Uh, you can also turn this into a a skit you know you can you can dramatize it in that manner by turning it into a skit with people actually uh, you know being the aunt and the one asking permission and so forth and we've done that plenty of times at schools it's always enjoyable I, I mean we, uh, right here at headquarters we've done it a few times and everybody always enjoyed the skits when we did them the dramatizations so don't hesitate to do that if you have a classroom situation where you're able to you uh, you teachers of the peaceful solution because th the students really do love this and it kind of lightens things up and wakes everybody up All right. so now we're gonna move on to procedure number eight that's on lesson plan five page E and we just finished up on page 132, understanding the main point. It starts out by saying, explain to students that disrespect can also come from people that you're not familiar with. Okay, so let's talk about that for a minute. So we've talked about friends, we've talked about family. Now what? We've even mentioned, you know, it's easy to show people respect that we don't really know. You know, at the grocery store, you bump into someone, oh, excuse me, I'm so sorry. Let me pick that up for you. <laughs> where, where, where maybe you, you would do that with your coworker and, and you just say, I oh, just pick it up, dude. You know, <laughs> I mean, So we can be real respectful to those we don't know. But what if they're disrespectful to you? What if somebody you absolutely don't know, never met before, is disrespectful to you? Well, um, we're going to talk about that a little bit. And, and you've got to deal with it a little bit differently. You know, you can't talk to them like you would a friend. And uh, you really don't know much about them. They could have a gun in their pocket. They could be just a raving lunatic that goes off the first time someone tries to even mention any kind of correction. And when I say correction, I'm not talking about, you know, yelling at them and trying to punish them verbally. I'm talking about true correction with care and concern. But some people can't handle it. So... Um, it can come from people that you don't know, and in situations like this, we, we have to deal with it differently. So we're going to read the section called A Different Approach, and then also, you know, bullies. Let's take a closer look at humility, and this is where humility is going to come into play big time, and always does in these situations. And this is found on pages 133 through, through 136. So let's go ahead and, and go there. Uh, well, it says also to instruct students to read the article, Bullying in School, and discuss the answers. But 
We're probably not going to get quite that far. Let's go ahead and turn over to page 133. I know we spent a lot of time on that, talking about the friends and the, and the reputations and uh, the, the disrespect and, and so forth. I know, I know we did, but I think it's an important point. And I think, I think understanding that main point on page 132, going over those, I think by making these things come alive and thinking about them, using your brain, you know, actually, actually thinking about it and forcing yourself to do it, you know, is very important. All right, so on page 133, it starts out with a different approach. So we're going to kind of set aside some of what we talked about earlier, not putting aside, you know, the care and concern or the appreciation of people and showing respect to everybody and including them and being part of the human race, you know. The question is, what should I do if someone I don't know well or don't know at all shows disrespect towards me? Hmm, okay, that's a question for you. Time to stop and think. Time to use our brain. Stop and think about it for just a minute. And, I, and I'm, really, I'm being a little elementary about this thing, but I think sometimes, I, I know I have, let me just speak for myself, I've just read through and just passed through and, you know, okay, what should I do? I, I look at it as a rhetorical question and just move on, you know. But really, you should stop and think about these things. It makes the lesson so much more uh, in it's so much more in depth. It makes it it makes it really grab hold in your life. So, what should you do if someone you don't know well or don't know at all shows disrespect towards you? Think about that. <clears throat> Keep thinking about it a little bit while we move on here. But whether or not you know the person, one thing is certain. You must have control over your emotions. Oh, oh, you mean this isn't going to tell us how to get the other dude to, to stop acting crazy? What? I don't even know if I want to read this. What? Huh, well, one thing's for certain. You, me, we must have control over our emotions and actions. Oh, well, man, I thought this was going to tell me what to do to, to, to the dude over there. All right, so we got to have control over our emotions and actions. Remember, it all goes back to everything we've learned. In order to respond appropriately to people who are disrespectful. Let's stop right there and talk about appreciation again. If we truly appreciate people, we truly care for people, um, we truly want to help people, this is going to be easier for us because we're going to have some form of humility that's, going, that's at work in our life. We're going to have some form of care and concern for the individual even though we might not be doing it perfectly at the time. You know, we're learning, we're catching on little by little, you know. And, and so, so this is going to come into play. So in the previous sections, familiarity breeds contempt. You learn that in order to preserve close relationships, disrespect should be dealt with in a polite, honest manner. However, when the disrespect comes from someone you don't know, it's not advisable, get this, it's not advisable to confront the individual about the way you're being treated. Now I know um, some of the examples given, like the bully at school, uh, says something to you, knocks your books down, or says something mean about you. And then some of the suggestions were, well, you could always, you know, just laugh with him and say, I, I resemble that remark, or, you know, what have you. If you don't know the person, you don't, you don't need to do that. If you know the person, that could go somewhere. That could, could probably work. But if you don't know the person, you can't use those suggestions on how to deal with this disrespect, on how to deal with this particular case of bullying, okay? Um, so when this disrespect comes from someone you don't know, it's not advisable to confront them about the way you're being treated. Example, if a stranger makes a derogatory remark to you as you're walking to school, to work, to the store, to anywhere. Do not try to approach that person. In situations like this, it's best to ignore the person. Um, you know, because if they don't get any response from you, a lot of times that's all they're looking for is that response. And if you turn and give them eye contact, 
or if you let them know that you even heard them, you know, they're going to, they're gonna, hey, why are you walking by me? You heard me. On the other hand, if you don't give them any eye contact, if you act like you didn't even hear them and you keep walking, it's in their mind too that, hey, maybe dude didn't hear me. Well, let me go on to the next victim. Think about it. So it's best to ignore the person. If you can't stop thinking about the incident, then talk to a trusted friend to vent your feelings. Sometimes we, uh, we all have to do that a little bit, you know. Keep it, uh, keep it respectful, you know. But, but we can talk about what has occurred. Holding it in will cause you to store anger and resentment. Keep in mind that you have no knowledge of this person's character, personality, or temperament, where they came from, what's going on in their mind, what their history is. They could be violent, abusive, easily, easily angered, and so forth. You have no knowledge of it. <clears throat> and we don't want to store the anger and resentment because what does that do? All that does is, you know, here the guy says something about us and we're all mad and <clears throat> we're resenting what he said and we learn who the person is and we hold on to that resentment wanting to get back and everything. Hold on to it for years. <laughs> and we're all stressed out and, you know, it's affecting our life and our blood pressure and our heart and everything. And dude's over here having a great time. He, he doesn't even know. He said something about you one time and it's over with. You know, he was on to the next person. And, and for the next five years you've been you know, holding it in, resenting it and everything. You know, it's, it's pitiful the way that works. I mean, really, we have to learn how to deal with things. All right, so let's go ahead and move on to the next page there. Um, now, page, one, page 134, I'm sorry. It's just kind of funny because I'm, I'm thinking about myself is what I'm doing. I'm thinking about things that I've held on to before for some period of time and think back and I'm thinking about the person that was in the other party and I'm thinking, you know, they, they have no idea. I, I mean, I never did say nothing to them. They, they don't even have any idea that I was holding this stuff in and cursing them and, you know, whenever I heard their name, <laughs> you know, and they had no idea. You know, so how ridiculous. All right, most acts of bullying begin with verbal disrespect and progress to physical disrespect. It can. <clears throat> In this section, you will learn a different approach to responding appropriately to disrespectful behavior when it involves someone who's not a member of your family or a close friend. It might be someone you don't know, could be an acquaintance, you know. And keep in mind, you know, like it said, it could, re it could progress to physical disrespect. The mental disrespect is already there. The verbal, mental, it, it can go to physical. So, although bullying can take place in families between older and younger siblings, the type of bully that we're going to focus on here is the school, uh, excuse me, the school bully. School bullies are not friends to their victims. Bullies usually victimize others because they appear to be weaker, younger, or different from them in some way. Bullies tease, antagonize, and take advantage of others, and they are habitually cruel and often take pleasure in seeing others in distress. And one of the things about bullies is that they're not all the same, first of all. We have to know that. They're not all the same. Some bullies are actually cowards in, in, um, in that they wouldn't dare jump at anybody if they're, they're threatening somebody and bullying somebody and that person turns around and is, is, gets, is fixing to get physical with them sometimes the bully might be the one that turns and runs the other way you know uh, because a lot of bullies are scared like that and they're trying to show how big they are and trying to put on some kind of uh, you know tough guy persona um, without actually even being the tough guy but they see someone that they think might be weaker than them and how, now, there's, now here's their shot to show everybody around how tough they are don't mess with me this is how tough I am buddy watch this you know and you're the poor sucker over there that gets the brunt of it so that's one type of bully another type of bully is very well prepared and capable of inflicting severe physical pain um, and likes doing it, and likes people seeing him do it. 
and he doesn't care sometimes if it's someone his own size or someone smaller or what have you. But most of the time, I think if you took bullies in general, it is they do bully people they think that are somehow lesser than them, whether it be the mental, the verbal, the physical, any type of that bullying, it's going to come from a person to another person and, and uh, that bully thinking that the other person is less than them, weaker than them, not as high of a job category, not, um, uh, not as much money, um, not as much schooling, or you went to a different school, or, or you don't dress as great as they do, or your car isn't as nice as theirs, or, you know, all these things come into play. So, <clears throat> these are just some of the reasons behind it. Bullying can take the form of verbal abuse, physical abuse, stealing, and destruction of property. You want to stay hydrated in this hot weather. <laughs> so if you're ever in a situation where someone is verbally abusing you at school, at work, um, at the store, whatever, the first thing you should do is maintain your self-control and don't respond with anger. <laughs> you mean again? We're talking about what I got to do again. Come on, man. When are we going to, like... Get something where, where we can turn it around on this guy and make him do what we want him to do. You know? No, it's never going to occur. It's only you. It, it comes down to what you can do. So, the first thing you have to remember is maintain your self-control. Don't respond with anger. And as with all other acts of disrespect, responding with anger is only going to make the situation worse. Remember the... Uh, <clears throat> The slide that uh, William, I think, had it showing the fighting the fire with fire. Remember that? Just a couple classes ago. So you can't fight fire with fire. You might get burnt. Um, so responding with anger is only going to make the situation work. You have to stop, think, and recognize. That sounds familiar. Here we go. You've got to stop, think, and consider your options, and then proceed with the right choice. See? Stop and think about it. And the right choice when dealing with a bully or someone disrespecting you is not to bully back, not to disrespect back, okay? You shouldn't have to think too much about that. You should pretty well have that in there, okay? The thing you're going to have to think about is how you're going to control your emotions and, and control uh, your hurt, your embarrassment, your frustration, all these things. Most acts of bullying start with verbal abuse in the form of teasing, name-calling, or put-downs. It's reported that students receive an average of 213 put-downs per week or 30 per day. Are you serious? Man, that is massive. 30 put-downs a day. Okay, let's see. What leads to that? Can anybody think of anything that might lead to that occurring? Well, um, I saw a commercial on TV one time that uh, people were disrespecting each other. There was a child that ran over and got something from another child and said something smart aleck to him. And, you know, it seemed to be the hero of the commercial. Do you think that that influence might go into a child's mind and then they might try doing some of the same things? They might try some of those put-downs. You know, there's a... Uh, I can think of movies from way back in the 70s and 80s. You know, I was alive back then. And I can think of movies from back then that, uh, as a young man, I could think of movies that had people putting each other down all the time. And it, was a, it looked like a fun thing. I could think of... Uh, uh, movies made for children by one of the big corporations uh, strictly for children that they were putting each other down and calling them names that looked like fun and everybody was laughing and having a big time I remember those things you know is that where we learned to do it did we learn to do it at work while we were working cutting each other down and you know laughing <laughs> you know? I mean did we learn it there and now it's passed on and everything I mean 30 per day really well, let me read the rest of this. 
Don't pretend that it's no big deal that someone is verbally abusing you. It is a big deal. And I know we've given examples before to where, you know, I myself and, and one of the other Peace of Solution teachers here that um, uh, experienced, it, it was a common thing. We made a joke about all the time when we would go over to someone's uh, house and eat that, that we knew well, and some of you or many of you know the person too, and we would go to the person's house and eat, and we would always talk about uh, you know, uh, burnt offerings uh, on the grill because the, it was always burnt, and we would laugh about it, you know. Well, one day when we were laughing about it, that person slammed the grill down and said, go eat somewhere else. And he was serious. And we're like, what? He <laughs> said, get out of here. I mean it. Go eat somewhere else. I'm sick of this. He had been laughing with us. And each time, it hurt him. And we didn't know. And it had to show up like that. Keep that in mind. So uh, that was a big one that I'll always remember how that one went down. But it is a big deal. And the likelihood is that the abuse will get ver uh, worse. Verbal abuse over time will lead to physical abuse. And many victims of bullies report they were punched, slapped, kicked, and shoved on a daily basis. And I think in the last class or the one before that, I mentioned it, that it even it occurred to me in school too. So, um, and, and I did some of it too. I became the bully. And then I was bullied again, and I think I became the bully again, you know. Probably as an adult some too. So we all need to look at what we're doing. These lessons are so that we can think about what we are doing and how we can make our lives and others' lives better by changing what, again, what we do and how we conduct ourselves and how we respond to this bullying and so forth, okay? I'd like to thank everybody for coming. Uh, our next class is on 7-2-23, that's a Sunday at 5.30 p.m., and I believe uh, Chris will be joining us to teach that class. So thanks a lot for coming, and we look forward to seeing you all again.